Greetings, Bill Mobley again for On Our Mind, a presentation of the Brain Channel uh, for UCTV. I'm speaking uh, again with Linda Cho, who's Executive Director of Stellar Care, an assisted living environment for people with dementia. And uh, we want to now talk, Linda, a little bit about the environment of assisted living. Uh, what kinds of folks are there? How are their families engaged in the process? And what are your goals for assisted living for those with dementia? Well, assisted living industry is not the same um, as it was uh, way back when, when people said, please don't put me in a home. And the home that they are thinking about is uh, often skilled nursing um, or nursing homes uh, back in the days when there were white walls and and three, four people to a room, and they sat in a wheelchair all day. So to the residents who are currently with us, um, they envisioned a home being somewhere where they went to die and had no stimulation at all. So uh, the model has changed. I think the assisted living industry, one person came, and, and we gave him a tour of our building and told him about all the activities and, and the things that we do. And they said, wow, this is like Club Med for seniors. And, and we laugh, but we want it to be that way. Um, the families are grieving their losses, but we see in our residents still life to be lived and, and, and moments of joy to be had. Um, so when they come in, we do an assessment. Uh, we do try to place them with uh, people with similar needs. Dementia has such a broad spectrum of need from uh, mild cognitive impairment uh, and with people who need medication reminders, uh, who need a little bit of assistance with dressing and reminders to go to their meals, to the end stage dementia when we really need to give them pureed diets, uh, we need to feed them, we need to change them, and we're providing end of life care. So it runs the whole spectrum. Um, and the building has to be large enough to make sure that all those needs are being met. Like I said, we have about 100 residents and over 100 people on staff. So it takes a lot of hands to do what we do. Large part of what we do is work with families very closely because residents are not able to speak to us necessarily about for their needs. Uh, we re rely on the families to communicate. So we partner up, we're part of a team, we communicate very closely with the doctors to uh, talk about medications, what medications are necessary, and the side effects of medications that we see. We're the ones that see them day to day. So if they're too sleepy or, 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 or it's not working at all, it's having the opposite effect. We let the physicians know and uh, the medications can be adjusted accordingly. We also have to communicate with the families. They have to know what's going on in their loved one's lives and they're uh, as much part of the team as, as the caregivers. They are the caregivers. Uh, we just do the day to day and they are caregivers in that they provide all the extras. They come to enjoy their mom and dad in the outings that, that we have. Uh, they come and play with the dogs and they bring pets and their children. We, this needs to be their home. It's not an institution. Um, it's their home, and we respect that. Um, so while the families are going through this tremendous guilt of placement, um, they will eventually see that mom and dad, with all of the uh, socialization that's going on, the activities that are there, uh, they do well. You know, they, in spite of themselves, in spite of their concerns initially, they do open up. They do enjoy the music therapy and they do enjoy the pet therapy, the aroma therapy, um, or simple outings and lunches. We have the charger band coming and they enjoy that and we have dancing and to, as much as possible, we don't necessarily say, do you want to do this? We often say, come on, Jim, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in the courtyard and I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Why don't you join me? And, you know, this is a generation that is very cooperative and, and they want to be nice and they often will join you. So we're pretty good at uh, getting our residents to engage. Um, sometimes people wait too long. Um, that's one of the things that we talk to families about. The goal is to keep mom and dad at home as long as possible. And we do every, we talked about earlier how to safeguard your home and, uh, and, and sign up with supportive services to keep mom and dad home or your spouse home as long as possible. But when it becomes too much, and there is a point when one person or even two or three uh, 
cannot care for somebody with dementia all by themselves and it's time for placement. Um, they do come, they, we do try to have the resources available so that they're not going to be sent out repeatedly toward the end of life. We do work with hospice, which suggest families and investigate hospice care so that there's not a disruption in their life and uh, they can have end of life care in the community as well. And disruptions are a problem, are they not? Uh, changing <clears throat> a venue, changing where a room is, even changing the way the room is organized can be upsetting and Absolutely. disorienting. Absolutely, absolutely. So familiarity and routine, even with dementia, routines can be established and there's familiarity and comfort in having a routine. So we try to set up each day so basic uh, schedule is the same. Uh, they get up in the morning, we assist with uh, grooming, they come down for meals, uh, they have their breakfast, and then right afterwards everyone goes to the various activities. And there's usually music going on, chair exercises, dogs running around, and that starts the day. And because most people are doing it, it's not too hard to just kind of join the crowd. Whereas at home, come on mom, let's do this puzzle. Nah, I don't feel like it. Um, but when everyone else is going out there enjoying the music, it's kind of easy to play follow the leader and, and, and they're able to participate. So the socialization process would seem to be really helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. And as you suggest, really <clears throat> live out one's life not just secure, not just safe, not just no longer burdening the family in ways that create lots of guilt, but uh, with real joy. Absolutely. I always say, you know, memory loss uh, is not a straight shot. Uh, it comes and goes at times. There are treasure uh, moments that uh, of, of um, cognition, I think, when things come back for a, a time being. Uh, one of my experiences uh, is that I walked in up the stairs and came to work one day and at our salon there, there are ladies waiting for to get their hair done and one lady was sitting there in the chair and I greeted everyone and I passed and I was walking down the hallway and pretty soon I had uh, Miss Ann following me, Linda, Linda, and I turned around and I'm shocked because Miss Ann did not, was not really basically nonverbal. She really didn't talk very much. I didn't know she knew my name. Uh, she called me and said, is it okay for me to get my hair done today? And I said, absolutely. You know, I th you have an appointment there. You can get your hair done. And she said, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I really enjoy getting my hair done. This is a lady who basically did not communicate. Um, I was shocked that she knew me, who I was. She knew that I worked there and she knew my name. Uh, many of us think that because they don't respond, our residents and the loved one, it, they're beyond that. But there are moments, you know, if we fill their lives with activity and joy, it's not that they're, it's not there, they enjoy it. That moment is still there and they're able to retrieve it at will. Not necessarily at our will, but when it's ready for them. Um, recently, I've had a family member diagnosed, very recently. And uh, we took um, a trip and uh, we traveled all over and my husband and I came back and we're sharing photos. My husband's a photographer and, and he, well, he, that's his hobby. He took like 600, 700 pictures. And uh, he's going, it's on the computer now. You don't just develop it, you have to fix it up. So he's going through the computer and looking at all this. And we had uh, mom sit next to him. And she looked and she goes, oh, wow, that's, I remember. She, when I talked to her after the trip, she really didn't remember the detail. She knew she had gone somewhere and she enjoyed it. Um, but kind of talking to her about what we ate, she didn't remember. Um, going over those pictures, she really enjoyed. And it came, a lot of it came back to her. So we printed up 600 pictures. He wrote everything on the back. And every day she kind of looks at it. We take her to work with us and she, they, she comes home with us. And she looks at those pictures and she says, you know what, it never gets too old. I really enjoy them. So you know, on a personal level, we deal with this and we focus on the joy. So we focus on the things that are positive and things that are, they're still able to do. And we treasure each moment. So you do this not only as a professional, but as also a family member. And my guess is that one informs the other in a very important way. Absolutely. Linda, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Bill Mobley for the Brain Channel, and this is On Our Mind.
Thank you.